All right, I'm back with another part of the Giants only playthrough. And last time we managed to triple the size of our army. We went from three Giants to nine. Yep, that's it. Our army of nine. If we can somehow triple the army again this video, that would be great. But in order to do that, we need money. That is our main bottleneck right now. Getting enough gold to build our army. With nine giants, we might be able to start taking down smaller groups of Night's Watch soldiers or maybe caravans, villagers, things like that. But the issue is there's a giant ass wall in the way. No Night's Watch caravans will come north because if we are the only enemy to the north and there's no one else to trade with, it doesn't make sense for them to travel north. We might be able to find a lord or two who's maybe raiding a village. As long as it's not a massive army, we might be able to take them down ourselves. Otherwise, the only other way we're going to get enough gold is to go back to the smithing grind and just keep spamming swords until we can eventually afford an army that can take down the Night's Watch. I think first of all, we're probably going to march south and see if there are anyone we can take out and earn a bit of gold that way. But if that doesn't go well, like I said, we probably will resort back to smithing, make the army bigger, and then we'll go south once again. We have found an enemy leader belonging to the Night's Watch. They have 61 soldiers against our 9 giants. 25 of those are ranged, 35 are infantry. The bulk of the infantry are recruits, but the bulk of the range are elite rangers. And being giants, I mean we're easy targets. We're twice the size of a normal person. So the average archer should be able to hit us, which could be a bit of a problem. We could challenge her to a one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know if she'll accept. We can see. Safe passage if I win the duel. Oh man, why did I just negotiate safe passage? I don't want safe passage. I want your head on a spike. I need gold. We're not going to begin the duel. We're going to go back on our word and we're going to go to battle. I am sure if me and the giants stand as one, stand as a united force, we can take down 60 Night's Watch soldiers. Bows at the ready, giants. Bows at the ready. We've already killed two of them. I don't know what's happened to my head, but I somehow have a bald head and it's poking outside my chainmail. We should get that fixed, I guess. It didn't look like this last time, I don't think. It looked normal. But the giant archers right now are absolutely annihilating the Night's Watch. It's like I've said before, they're basically using portable ballistas. Did I just smash that guy's shield with one swing? Alright, giants, you know what needs to be done. It is clobbering time, men. It is clobbering time. I had the confidence in the men that we were going to win the battle. But at no point did I expect it to be this one-sided. I'm having some difficulties swinging this damn weapon, it seems. At this rate, I might just storm Castle Black with my eight giants. We'll bring them down, no problem. And look at the accuracy. The guy hit someone on a horse moving. Not bad. Not bad at all. Oh god, we killed her. Oh man. Well, there goes the goal, damn it. I know I said the goal in the beginning of the playthrough was to bring down the Night's Watch and take the wall for ourselves. But I didn't mean to actually kill her on the battlefield. Those damned portable ballistas. Although we got a nice bit of influence and a good chunk of renown, that influence should earn us a good mercenary wage for a few days. So overall, not bad. Not bad at all. 
We found ourselves a nice pair of gloves on the battlefield. The only problem is, because they're designed for human hands and not giant hands, if I put them on, they uh, restrict blood flow in the wrists a little bit. <laughs> We really do need some proper giant armor because clearly the normal standard armor isn't designed for the giant model and we get this clipping effect everywhere. As you saw with my bald head poking out my chainmail hat. We have found our next target. It is another Night's Watch leader, this time with 67 soldiers. My only concern is this guy has 58 ranged troops. That means they're just going to sit back on the battlefield and shoot at us from a distance. That being said, he also says, I hear you defeated Lady Dorothy in battle. Defeated is a bit of an understatement. She's six feet under, my friend. Well, what's left of her is six feet under. We need to be careful with what we're doing because Joe Mormont is sitting on the sidelines with 300 troops. And I know we absolutely annihilated Dorothy, but I'm not that confident that we can bring down 300. The giant archers are lined up and firing away. Neither side has any casualties at the moment, which isn't great for us, to be honest with you, because we need kills. So I am going to tell the men to charge. They'll carry on firing as we close the gap, which is ideal for us. Because if we don't close the gap, I got a feeling we may lose a giant or two. Or eight. The trees are providing really good cover for the Night's Watch, which is making this battle even more awkward for us. We need to get close enough that they stop shooting. That's the goal. Although that being said, I am jumped by like seven guys now. And I can't swing at them. Why can't I swing at the enemy? Giants, attack! It is clobbering time, my friends. It is clobbering time. The sword doesn't seem to be working too well because I can't get a proper angle when they're right at my feet. We do need a giant club like the others have. I think there's a reason they have a weapon like this. But now that we have reached the enemy front lines, they are just getting clobbered. Hopefully we don't get outnumbered. That's it my friend, cave is sculling. But if this battle has proved one thing, it shows Emir is not quite ready to conquer the world. We need better armor to reduce the damage, and we need a better weapon. I don't know if I can make a giant's club. Maybe we... Oh god, he just caved that horse's skull in. Fair enough. But as I was saying, I don't know if we can make maybe like a blunt two-handed. If we can craft a giant's club, that'll be good. We have lost the giant. Thankfully, he's wounded and not dead. So assuming the others win the battle, then um, he will recover from his wounds. The good thing about using these blunt clubs means at the end of battle, we have a lot of prisoners to sell. 36 influence, that means a lot of gold from the mercenary contract. And as you can see, three enemies died. They are probably either the enemies I killed, or someone who got hit by an arrow at the start of the battle. But once the giant started clubbing, everyone is just knocked out. Although, I mean, after being hit by a club like that, you may be alive, but I think it's safe to say you're most likely brain dead. Well, speaking of getting better armor, that's quite the upgrade, going from 11 body armor up to 35. So we'll wear the Night's Watch armor. They also have some pretty good boots. There is a cape as well, and we don't have one. Well, I said at the start of this video, we were either going to take down the Night's Watch or resort to smithing. And in the end, I did a bit of both. 
We took down two Night's Watch Lords, and while I made my way north to sell all the battle loot and recover from our battle wounds and stuff, I decided to do a bit of smithing. So if we enter the smithy now, I'm now a level 110. I want to get to level 125 because once you reach that level, you can unlock a perk with refining materials costs less stamina, so we can refine a lot quicker. But with the money I just earned from smithing and the money we earned from taking down the Night's Watch, I have brought in some additional giants into the army. We have four more brand new recruits. We're gonna have to level them up because we need to get them a bow because the bow seems to give us a massive advantage at the start of the battle. In terms of gold, well, I've spent pretty much all of our gold and all of the influence we earned from both battles have already expired. We've used it all up. It doesn't take long for influence to fall. The more influence you have as a mercenary, the quicker it falls, but you do gain gold a lot quicker as well. But I guess now, with our newly found giants, our army of 13, it is time for a second March of the Giants. We're going to head back south and we're going to take the fight to the Night's Watch once more. While we were marching south to fight the enemy, it just popped up in the bottom left that Mance Raider won a tournament at Then. So while we're putting our life on the line, our people are dying, the undead attacks from the north, the Night's Watch from the south, Mance Raider is sitting comfy in the settlement winning tournaments. What kind of leader is he? We cannot make our way any further south than we have because, uh, well, as you can see, there is a big ass wall in the way. So instead, we're gonna lurk north of Castle Black and wait and see if we can see like a Night's Watch patrol or something come through the gate and maybe we can take them down. Otherwise, there's not much else we can do at the moment. And there you go. One of the leaders of the Night's Watch has taken the bait. 51 soldiers, 34 of those being infantry, and out of those 34, 19 are recruits. This should be a swift, decisive victory for the Giants clan, and then hopefully we can level up the new Giants and turn them into ranged soldiers. I don't know why it says one cavalry. As far as I'm aware, none of us ride a horse. Into position, Giants! Ballistas at the ready! I wonder how many soldiers we can kill before they reach our front lines. We've already killed a fair few, to be honest with you. These giants are absolute monsters. We also have our new Night's Watch armor, so our body armor is now in like the 40s. So I should take even less damage than before. And there goes the Night's Watch infantry. Trying to throw javelins, but to be honest with you, my accuracy is not the best. And now... Well, actually, we will... Oh, no, we may as well send everyone to attack. It looks like we've nearly run out of arrows. You may as well charge, lads. Here is, after all, clobbering time. I wonder if I'll have better luck in first person hitting the enemies. Maybe that seems to be better. I can actually target them easier in third per uh, first person. The only problem is, in first person, you don't see an awful lot around you. But nice work, lads. Nice work. That's another Night's Watch army that has been clobbered to death. Well, it looks like we're straight into another battle. I didn't even get to rest. She showed up out of nowhere. You may fight us, but many of your men will be killed. <laughs> Foolish woman. We are not mere men. 
We are giants. Like I said, we barely recovered from our previous fight. Well, I say barely recovered. We didn't recover at all. We still have the movement penalty from just coming out of a battle. She has 93 soldiers, but 71 of those are infantry. And out of those 71, 56 are recruits. So to be honest with you, even though there's 90 soldiers on the battlefield this time, I think it's going to be another easy win for the Giants. I can't see her causing that many issues, if I'm completely honest. Only one Giant leveled up last time, which is a bit of a shame. Alright lads, we should probably stop focusing on the cavalry and start focusing on the 70 soldiers that are running at us at full speed. I don't know where my javelins are going. There we go. And well, it is time to cut them down once more, I guess. We may as well charge. I'm kind of conflicted because I like the third person view better than the first, but I can't hit anything in third person. What does one do? Do I just accept that my accuracy is terrible and we may not hit someone again? Well, actually, there we go. We hit that man and that one and that one. We're killing them. I repeat, we're killing them. As long as they don't get too close, we should be alright. And I just got shot by a crossbow and took two damage. And just like that, another Night's Watch leader has been taken down. Well, I have just sold all of the battle loot, ransomed the prisoners, plus the gold we got from our mercenary contract. We can now afford two more giants. The only problem is I went to hard home to sell all of my gear because otherwise Ben is all the way to the north. And by the time we get there, it'll just be a waste of time. So for now, we're going to keep going with the 13 giants, but it's good to know we have enough gold for two additional giants. There is an army of 159. We managed to take down an army of 90, but is 159 starting to push our luck a little bit? That being said, we do have an ally of 35. By the time I arrived, half of their army was killed already. If we arrived like a second sooner, there would have been 60 of them. But now that we have 50 against their 127, they do have Sons of the Harpy. I'm not entirely sure what Sons of the Harpy are doing this far north. But as they have decided to join our enemy, we have no choice but to take them down. Our ally is going to charge into the enemy head on. We, on the other hand, are going to sit back and form a defensive line. In the previous battle, all of the giants ranked up, so every single one has a bow. Half of them, though, are actual archers trained with the bow, and the others are elder giants who just happen to have a bow. Although that being said, our ally has been completely wiped out. They didn't stand a chance by the looks of things. My giants, on the other hand, we're putting up a solid fight. The enemy have yet to reach our front lines. And to be honest with you, I don't think they will. Alright, giants, we are all out of arrows. It is clobbering time, men! Let's bash some skulls and earn some gold. I'm hoping the influence for this battle will be really good as there's over a hundred of them. But we did have the ally helping us, so we might not earn as much as we think.
Range troops seem to be our weakness at the moment because we have no way of blocking them. I mean, don't get me wrong, we don't take a lot of damage. But there's no way we can block ranged attacks. So if, an, if we run into an opponent who has a lot of archers that are highly skilled, we could end up getting annihilated, to be honest with you. But right now, we're lucky that we're just fighting the Night's Watch, which are basically criminals that have been given the most basic gear. I only killed six enemies that battle. Meanwhile, the other 12 giants... Took down 125. How do you only kill 8 people with an entire army, yet you still get 19% of the battle loot? I'm sorry, but that doesn't quite add up. We should be getting a bigger share than that. Well then, we have ourselves a harpy mask. We lose one head armor, but we gain additional body and arm armor. We should probably equip it because like I've mentioned before, being a giant, we really get hit in the head. Everyone just hits our massive body. So we're going to put that on, get some additional body armor, and now we have 59. If we weren't a tank before, we definitely are now. If we take a look at the diplomacy tab right now and have a look at what's happened in this war, we have almost doubled their strength rank. Well, actually, no, we have over doubled their strength rank. We have inflicted nearly 8,000 casualties compared to their 4,000. We have 13 of them locked up right now. We have more towns and castles than them. They have pulled off more raids, but not that much more, only two more than us. But in total, there have been 24 raids this war. The war has gone on for 123 days. Everyone is in favour of ending it to receive 2,500 tribute a day. Although that being said, I don't know how wars work in this mod anymore. I don't know if because in like the books and the show, the Night's Watch and the Free Folk are always at war so we can't end it. Or whether the game just forces you to begin it, but whether like you end it or not, that's entirely up to you. I have no idea, we're just going to have to wait and see I guess. But I think this time we're going to make our way north back to Sen because with the new prisoners and the additional battle loot we should be able to get three, possibly four more giants. We have made our way back south to the battlefield. We did manage to recruit four more giants into the army with all of the gold that we earned. We do have enough gold for one more, but at the time I was at Sen, we didn't have enough, and that just recently came in from our mercenary contract, although that influence is now entirely spent, so that income is now gone. But I'm not too sure what our next move should be. I don't know how much longer this war with the Night's Watch is going to last. Like I mentioned before, I don't know if it's a permanent ongoing war because of the law between the two factions or whether it will come to an end soon. But with our giant army, we have clearly shown with about 13 giants or so, or even round about 10, I can't remember exactly how many we had at the time, but we can take down an inexperienced army of 90 soldiers. We did take down the 120, but at that time as well, I mean, we did have an ally and the ally did distract them so we could just fire at them from a distance. So that one is a bit of an unclear victory. Would we have won if it was just our 13 giants versus the 100 soldiers? I don't know. I can't confidently say we would have won the battle. But as we're getting a good understanding of what kind of sized army we can deal with, I'm not entirely sure what our next move should be. How many more giants do we need before we start making our move? I imagine it's going to be hard to siege any of these castles, especially with like 20 giants. Is it just going to be suicidal? Because by the time it takes to build a siege camp and everything, it may have just been a waste of time. I don't even know if you need a minimum amount of soldiers before you can siege a city either. Can we actually even begin the battle 
with only 20 giants. But I think the plan going forward, for as long as this war continues, we are going to keep lurking around the gate by Castle Black. We're going to keep picking off Night's Watch Lords, slowly picking off bigger and bigger targets as we start to grow and keep rapidly earning gold so that we can just keep growing and growing and growing. If the war does come to an end, the first thing I'm going to do is just spam smithing. Like in the background until another war begins or something, I'll just spam smithing until we have tons and tons of gold and form an army that way. But as long as the war is going, we may as well keep killing. But that is going to be it for this part. I feel like we're starting to rapidly pick up progress and things are moving a lot quicker. But as always, a big thank you to the Gwaggles members for your continued support. And if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe, and until next time, see ya.